So now that we're introducing JavaScript and working with the DOM, we need to consider where our JavaScript is placed within the overall DOM structure. So it's important to note that HTML block loads. You can think of all these elements as building blocks and they block load. So this element loads, then this one, then this one, then this one. It goes one by one by one by one and it starts going through and rendering each element one by one by one by one. But there is a significant problem with, let's say if I have a large JavaScript file and I take this large JavaScript file and I put it in the head. Now this is perfectly fine. You can do this, but there's one significant problem. If this JavaScript file is very large, then it's actually gonna have to wait until this JavaScript file is finished loading and then it's gonna to have to carry on rendering the page. That means this part here, the bit the user sees, they can see the paragraph, they can see the header one, for example, is slower for them to view. Whereas if you take the JavaScript file and you put it at the bottom of the body, it means that they get to see these elements block load quicker. But also it does something else. It means that our script is ready to start modifying the HTML because it's block loading. So I know all of these blocks of code, these elements have loaded and it also makes sure that there is an object in the document object model, the DOM for those HTML elements. And therefore when the document has loaded, when all these elements have finished loading in, I can then start modifying those objects, searching for those objects. Whereas if I had the script in the head, what I'd have to do is I'd have to tell this script to wait for the page to finish loading and then I can start modifying. But I would rather not do that. I would rather put it in the best position and I always recommend this now is put your JavaScript files at the bottom of the body tags. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this now and then I'm gonna take a look at the myapp.js file. We now know that the myapp.js file will execute when my header ones and my paragraphs and all the rest of those objects have been created. So what I'm going to do is first of all, I'm gonna say document.getElement by ID. And I wanna get the element with the ID of hello. This is perfectly fine. If I refresh the page, nothing happens. You can log it out to the console if you wish to see that it is working. So I can say console.log and log it out like so and go ahead and save it. And there is my paragraph element being targeted. Now, as you know, this is just printing it out in fancy print. We may just want the object itself. So instead of using console.log, use console.dir. And dir will tell you to print out an interactive list so that you can actually view it for the object that it actually is. So if I open this up, you'll have the inner HTML and also the inner text properties as well. Now at the moment, inner HTML looks exactly the same as inner text, but I'll show you the difference when we move on to the header one element. But for right now, if I actually wanted to change the text within the opening and closing paragraph tags for the hello paragraph here, if I want to change it, I can use either or I could use in a HTML or I could use in a text. But as I want to change the text specifically, then I'm going to stick with in a text. So I'm just going to take a look at going back and taking a look at the my app. Now we know that console.log has provided us the information that this is returning an object. When you run this, it returns an object. Now it's not a new object, it's a reference to the object. What I mean by that is it's just like a memory pointer. It's finding the object, it's not returning a new object, it's the same object, but it's just allowing you to point directly to that object in the document object model. It's just a way to refer it. It's just providing you in essence a pointer, like a memory pointer. And when you run this method, it will return an object. And then you can access the inner HTML or the inner text if you wanted to, like so, and you can modify its value. Let's go ahead and do that now. Let's say document.getElementById.hello and then I can say dot inner text because don't forget this part returns an object and this is accessing that object here. We're accessing the inner text and we'll set it to new world. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that now and let's hit refresh and see what happens. You'll notice now it doesn't say hello world anymore like it did before. It's saying new world because I've just changed it and I can change it 
in the browser again. So instead of actually just reassigning the entire text, don't forget we can also have the plus equals. And I'm gonna change that to space order. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna look at the existing value of the inner text, which is new world. And what we're doing is by that plus sign, we're adding, meaning concatenating these strings together, new world. We're concatenating them together to make one giant string, new world order, and we're assigning it back. So I'm gonna say plus equals, and then I'm gonna make sure that's a string, hit return. You'll notice it says new world order. I needed to add that space in there, but you can see that it concatenated those strings together. So you don't have to completely replace the value. You can use the existing value and add additional information onto it. Now, on top of that, if we go ahead and let's say copy this, in here what we are doing is we're doing things actually in a very lethargic way for the JIT compiler what I mean by that is we're doing work unnecessarily we have got two document dot get element by IDs now when these methods are run you can think of it like somebody looking through a dictionary for a specific word well we're looking through the entire DOM structure which is the dictionary for a specific word which is the element and the problem is that we are researching we're going back over ourselves again we've already found this element in memory this object that resembles that element but with then we're doing it again and that doesn't make a lot of sense you should only do one search and then start modifying it so we know that really this is returning a reference to the object it's just a memory pointer so what we can do is we can give it a symbol name so we can access it easily so i'm going to say var p hello equals document dot get element by id hello so now we're searching through our dictionary once finding the word once and then we can start to run potentially or change properties or run methods so for example now i can say p hello and this again will produce the exact same value as you can see so what I'm doing here is I'm establishing a memory pointer. This is just a reference to the object in the document object structure. It's not returning a new object. It's just allowing us to point to that object in memory. So it's searching through the document once to get the element by the ID of hello. And it's returning a memory pointer, a reference in memory to where that object resides within our document. And then when we refer to phello, we're just referring to that object. It's just an easy way to access that, access that object. And now, instead of running it twice, we just run the search once, and it also means that our script will run quicker. Now, you can also modify the text via inner HTML, but why is there two different versions? Well, inner text is just for the text that's presented to the user within the element. It includes no HTML whatsoever. So let's go ahead and clarify this. If I wanted to, let's say, add in a HTML element, we would say, let's say, span. And so we're adding in some HTML here, and I want to say, hello world. So we've got this span element. I'm gonna save it and hit refresh, except it isn't a span element. What's happened is it's escaped these special characters, meaning it doesn't actually get recognized by the HTML rendering engine. Instead, what it's doing is it's actually just printing it out as standard text, inner text. But inner HTML is a little bit different. It will allow us to add in HTML. So let's change this from inner text to inner HTML and make sure HTML is in all capitals. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this now and hit refresh and you'll notice it says new world order, hello world. And if I take a look at the elements, I can see the paragraph, new world order, and then I can see the span, hello world. So instead of actually escaping the angle brackets and so forth and special characters so HTML wouldn't render it, inner HTML doesn't do that. Inner HTML will allow you to place HTML content or create HTML content within the actual element itself. So within HTML it's a little bit different to inner text in the fact that you can actually add in more HTML. Also, if you take a look at this, if I say DIR and I point to this object, P hello, if I take a look at my paragraph element with the idea of hello, you'll notice that we have with the inner HTML, I can see the HTML, whereas in a text, I cannot see the HTML. There's no span tags there. It just gives me the text 
that is presented visibly to the user. So that's why we have the differences in a text and in HTML allow you to do two different things. Now also you may have noticed that if we scroll down and again just read through these things because there's lots and lots of things here, you have something called outer HTML and outer text. So the outer text again is just presenting the text that's visible to the user. But outer HTML actually allows us to take a look at the element itself, the paragraph element here. It lets us look at the outer HTML, not just the inner HTML. So any HTML inside of it, but out HTML lets us look at everything outside as well, the elements itself and what's inside of it as well. So now I can actually change this from being a paragraph. Let's take a look at this. I'm gonna take a look at myapp.js and I'm going to change this. So here is my outer HTML, it's, it's a paragraph element. And what I'm gonna do is just copy that out real quick. And I'm gonna say p hello dot outer HTML. And then we're going to set it equal to a new outer HTML string. And be very, very careful because if you use double quotes, we've got an ID attribute that uses the double quotes and it escapes out of the string. So this executes as JavaScript. When working with outer HTML, always go with those single quotes and even with inner HTML as well. So now what I want to do is paste this in. And now my ID attribute with the double quotes will not escape out of the single quotes. And I need to just make sure this is valid. And I'm going to change it from a paragraph to, let's say, a header to element. So I'm going to save this now. So it's going to replace the outer HTML with header to tags. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to hit refresh and we've got the new world order, hello world, in the header two. So here's header two, and there also is my span. So that is how to modify the outer HTML. You also have outer text as well if you wanted to, and that would actually, if we say outer text, again, notice that we are using HTML here, but this syntax will actually be escaped, meaning it won't be recognized by the HTML renderer. So if I go ahead and save this now and hit refresh, you'll notice that it turned it into simple plain text. And it's not even an element anymore. It's just a standard text within a HTML file, which you can do, but obviously that's not recommended. So be very careful when using outer text. Because if you use out of text, then you're going to strip away the tags that contain the text. And it's actually going to turn it into just raw text in the HTML. So I'm going to change that back to out of HTML and I'm going to go ahead and hit refresh. So there we go. That is how you modify the contents of a particular element. Now, last but not least, what would you do, for example, if I wanted to select this span here? Well, I could do document dot query selector all. And I'm going to use a CSS selector string to target this. So I'm going to say, right, target the header one element that has a span element within it. So there is my memory pointer. Now, you know that query selector all has the ability, has the option of returning multiple elements. So query selector all, even though it may only be able to target one element, it's still going to return an array. And I'm again going to create a nice little pointer to it. So I'm going to say span h1 and i'm going to set that equal to the memory pointer that's returned document.query selector all so i'm going to go ahead and save that now and we'll hit refresh and if you go to the console you can say right dir and we want to log out span h1 and when i hit return it returns an array. Now be very, very careful here because the array itself doesn't have an inner html or out html. Well, this object here the object at the index of zero is the span element object. So if you were to say document.querySelector all dot in a text or in a HTML, it would error because you're pointing this returns to this array. So if I was to say square brackets zero, now it's pointing to the zero element. So document.querySelector all is like opening up that dictionary. We're looking for a specific word, a specific element, this span element, and it's going to return an array like so. And then we're accessing that array and looking at the element at the zero index, which is the span. And then you can start to modify it. So I can say span header one. And then of course I can say dot in a HTML and we'll just set that equal to new text and let's go ahead and save that now and then hit refresh 
and you'll see new text here because we targeted this span within the header one. If you didn't do that, then basically you won't have anything happen. What you're actually doing is creating a new property on the array, which is bad. We don't want that. So you need to say span header one, zero. Then you're saying in HTML like so. So you can either put it here or here, hit refresh. And there we go, new text here. So be very, very careful when working with, for example, get elements by class name, get elements by tag name elements, or query selector all, always return an array. And you need to make sure that you're targeting the actual DOM object itself rather than the array of the returned references, the return memory pointers. And again, this is so important. When I say document dot get elements by tag name and I get all the paragraph elements, for example, you are in essence getting memory pointers and these memory pointers are just a reference to the objects in the document object model. They're not new objects. They are the same objects. It's just pointing to it's just referencing those objects in your overall document object model. So keep going through it, modify, play around and experiment with the query selector all, with the get element by ID, get element by tag name, get element by class names, and start modifying these elements and see what you can do.